What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. It's Roll Queue Day. Finally, everyone gets a chance to play it now. Onto the live game, you finally can see where you stack up in the ranked environment across the three different roles. In today's video, we wanted to explain how this system works and the best ways to rank up in Locked 222. The first thing to explain is placements and the soft MMR reset. We're used to in the Overwatch community placement games not mattering much, depending on how they tweaked it, if at all, from the PTR going to the live roll queue beta that isn't the case anymore it seems your first five placement games are going to do a lot to swing where it places you up or down from where your old rank was now this is different for everybody because as jeff has said in interviews behind the scenes they have already been taking mmr statistics across your roles they've already been filtering all of us down to get ready and prepped for the roll queue beta but not all of us play all the roles so if say you've literally never touched a support hero in your life, but you're a pretty good DPS, where there's a good chance that you mechanically will perform well in your placements and pretty quickly get that role near where your main is. But this also can go the other way too. If you've never played damage in your life and you've only played tank, getting in line to wait your DPS cues could result in you getting a radically lower placing. So you're going to want to be careful with that. It's going to be different depending on who you are and how much you've played different heroes on the account that you're placing. The more data it has from the past I don't know six months or something depending on when they started doing this the more accurate it's going to be but the less data they have the more important that the placement games will be in where it eventually places you now remember there's a stage two to this as well and I wasn't a fan of this on the PTR but I assume it's going to be in the live version as well where after you place and get your rank you're not really done placing yet because just like when you come off of decay games or when you make a new account there'll be a soft adjustment period and I say soft it's actually quite severe where you're going to be getting radical gains for wins or losses this will be a little bit frustrating because whether or not you win or lose those following games can result in hundreds of SR of a swing up or down I wish they didn't do this and it's kind of a way of still having 10 placement games even though it technically shows you your rank after five but you're still kind of in that placement gap so after you place it's not time to get off the gas you got to really try hard to make sure you win those because you're going to be getting massive boosts where if you do end up winning you may in fact even be placing up higher than you normally are now it is the basis of this system being the case that makes me nervous about this because we don't want players radically boosting or dropping hundreds of sr away from where they're comfortable from playing so keep that in mind the game quality might not be quite there for the first few days until all of this kind of shakes out. So to be clear, yes, there is technically only five placement matches now, but afterwards there's a radical adjustment period, which you might as well still count as placements anyway, of about five games or so after that. Now, with the placements out of the way, let's talk about strategies of playing the game and how to get the most out of this system and rank up in it. I would say in general, it's pretty important to learn your full role for maximum success in 222. The way the game plays now, now, is that every role has counter picks to whatever entity you think the enemy is carrying the game with. For example, in the support category, there's a lot of counter picks that can deal with some of the most problematic characters in the game. Far doing too much work, Ana or Batiste can take matters into their own hands. If flankers are wrecking ball, Doomfist causing too much space, Brigida stands her ground in the back line, and so on and so on. All the roles feel this way where there's so many characters available that since you can't swap across roles, I think it's very important that you learn to swap within your role. But also that requires you you to play multiple heroes and keep in mind that might mean it's the best thing for you to do is play quick play to learn some of these other gaps in your game that's going to be different for all of you and maybe made more apparent to you when you do start playing ranked try to go to heroes you thought you could play and maybe you're not as good as you thought you were playing in quick play to grind your fundamentals is going to be a legitimate way to improve and get ready for ranked and also i think a good way to calm down if ranked is giving you too much trouble because quick play will be a reliable fun experience as well now the other strategy, of course, is to try to find a duo queue to play with, hopefully one that complements some of your weaknesses. It used to be problematic to queue with two players on the same role because you didn't know if you were going to get a third, fourth, fifth, or sixth player of that role in the old system. Now that's gone entirely and you and a friend can lock down damage, tank, or support and really build a synergy and as well control the swaps of that category. Whereas sometimes if you're the lone tank and your teammate is boundly 
really determined to play Winston or Wrecking Ball or something, it could be hard to play something like Reinhardt, for example, even if it's what you should play in the situation if they're not going to synergize with you. Of course, queuing on multiple roles can work as well. A tank and a healer do develop their own synergies, a tank and a DPS as well. But to some degree, I think you will find that the best way to queue, I think, is two people in the same category so you can just eliminate all the variables and, and more easily take control of that game, at least from your position fully. Remembering, of course, the sum total of synergies is greater than the individual parts when you actually run the important combos properly together. And to that degree brings up my next point where just counterpicking in general is incredibly important in this meta. Keep in mind some of the catch-all heroes right now in the damage category are Mei, Reaper, Hanzo. Keep in mind in the tank category, Sigma, I don't believe, is going to go live into the role queue beta. Jeff said he's not going to come out into ranked until season 18. So that means the interaction that I've talked a lot about with Sigma being really strong against Orisa, we won't even see into the game yet. So Orisa will will still be kind of de facto the best tank, but if you can find spots to put Reinhardt on the low ground against her, I think you will find success, but it's just that you really need Sigma to be able to siege Orisa when she's set up on the high ground, denying follow-up on the halts, breaking her shield, taking space. He does that better than Rein can if he can't get in on her because she's safely on the high ground perch somewhere. Other than that, big support picks for you if you're learning that role and are trying to shorten your queue times. Both Mercy and Mo Moira are incredibly good most of the time. Remembering as well, for your placement games, you just want to farm as much statistical output as you can, win or lose. It's more about your impact. And you might think, well, characters like Ana and Zen, they carry the game, but also they're the ones that are harder to get your value out of. Even if your team are feeding and playing badly, you're going to farm up stats on Mercy and Moira. Whereas if you don't have space to operate or you lose your duels as some of the harder supports, well, you're not going to put any stats on the board if you're in the respawn room, whereas Mercy and Moira both can escape really easily. Use that to your advantage, stay alive, and keep those stats churning, and you're going to get placed higher than you otherwise would, and also probably give more value to the team anyway. That being said, though, it is very important that you pick synergies and counterpick. I wouldn't be too precious about assuming what the top meta is. If your teammate is boundly determined to run a certain type of strat, it works a lot better in 2-2-2 to lean into that, or at the very least, counter what the enemy's doing. One of the two. Are we a divey team? Are are we a death ball team? Are we a bunker team? Try to fit into the main play styles of the game and you're going to see a lot more success. And my last tip for you, remember that you can swap your role whenever you're tilted. Having three SRs is beautiful. Whichever one you consider your main, when you get too stressed, you can always queue up on an off role. Now keep in mind, a lot of other people will be doing this as well, which means especially in the early stages of role queue, we're going to have a lot of players who are learning roles in ranked and with the SR system not quite there yet, try to be patient with your teammates who might be playing heroes in ranked that they never have before. Remembering, of course, that with time, this system does work a lot better, but in the short term, some of the games might be a little sloppy, a little unreliable until enough matches are played for it to settle down. But hopefully with all of this advice, you can jump right into roll queue, have a great time, and hopefully get an even higher rank than you have in the past. We're playing actual Overwatch now, everybody. Are you excited? Because I sure am. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.